Coming up next, a song that has been hailed as one of the sexiest ever recorded. It has also landed on lists for being one of the worst songs of all time. I mean, love it or hate it, its impact on pop culture, it's undeniable. Created by a classmate of a former president of the United States, it was inspired by the lunch menu at a diner in Washington, D.C. This song skyrocketed a new band to fame, even scoring them their own TV show, featuring a then-unknown comedian by the name of David Letterman. Although we all know it as a fun and easy sing-along, the revered producer and engineer behind it considered it to be one of the most complex songs they ever worked on. Join us as we uncover the fascinating tale behind one of the most unforgettable one-hit wonders of the entire rock era. Coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember the crazy antics of your favorite clay boys, Gumby and Pokey, you're going to dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now. We also have a Patreon. You're going to want to check that out there. You'll find uh, more content. You can become an honorary producer to help us curate this music history. Actually, thinking back on it, uh, Pokey's a horse, so he's not a clay boy, but you, you get the point. So before David Letterman became a household name on late night TV, believe it or not, he was part of the Starland Vocal Band Show. It's, it's time for the Starland Vocal Band Mailbag. We'll catch up with Happy Danoff, Bill Danoff, Margot Chapman, and John Carroll right after this. Well, many of you uh, probably can't recall this show. You have likely sang along to their iconic smash single, Afternoon Delight. The Starland Vocal Band comprised of two married couples, Bill Danoff and Taffy Nyvert Danoff, and John Carroll and Margot Chapman, earned five Grammy Award nominations in 1977, clinching victories for Best New Artist and Best Vocal Arrangement. The three Wilson brothers from the Beach Boys, including a rare appearance by Brian Wilson, the genius, actually handed this band their Grammy for Best New Artist. Uh, actually, they beat out Boston who, of course, set a record for having the best-selling debut of all time, one of the best albums ever. Scarlet Vocal Band. Seven years before the formation of Starland Vocal Band in 1967, it was the Bill and Taffy show, as in Bill Danoff and his living girlfriend, Taffy Nyvert. Uh, the couple were in a folk act that was called Fat City. They didn't receive much attention beyond the Washington, D.C. area where the two resided. Uh, over a four-year span, Billy and Taffy, they wrote over 300 songs together, yet not one of them sparked any interest from the record industry. So after two rather eclectic albums and opening for the likes of Amy Lou Harris and John Denver, Fat City evolved into simply Bill and Taffy. As you can recall from a previous edition of P.O.R., uh, this duo hit pay dirt with their collaboration on Take Me Home Country Roads with the great John Denver in 1971. Of course, our fortunes steadily improved from there. My home far away, driving down the road, I get a feeling that... On the strength of their success with Take Me Home Country Roads and the ardent backing of the emerging star power of Mr. Denver, Bill and Taffy were signed by John's label RCA, and they released two albums uh, that misfired, and the couple was back to the drawing board from there. Pass it on, pass it on. So one afternoon in 1974, Bill was hanging out with his friend singer Margot Chapman at Clyde's, a neighborhood restaurant on M Street in Georgetown that's been there since uh, the early 60s. So Bill and Margot met after 3 p.m. Uh, the kitchen was only serving small appetizers that were listed on a table tent menu as afternoon delights. Uh, the menu heading gave Bill an epiphany for a song. He thought Afternoon Delight could be, in his words, and I quote exactly, a really neat title. <laughs> so while Bill and Margo were enjoying a little tea and some Afternoon Delights at Clyde's, poor Taffy, who was then married to Bill, was undergoing surgery for cervical cancer. Cause I'm flying home to Nashville today. During Taffy's recovery, Bill came into Taffy's hospital room and informed her that he had an idea for a new song. Uh, that's a weird sequence of events, but it's exactly the way that both Bill and Taffy recount it. So there's that. Bill worked on his Afternoon Delight song concept for months, primarily when he was uh, watching his favorite football team, the former Washington Redskins, in action on Sunday afternoons. 
It was actually during a Redskins game that Bill conceived the melody of the song on his 12-string guitar. One of the songs that helped him get the song just right was the long acoustic version of Rod Stewart's Maggie Mae. He started to play with a lick that had uh, the same feel of Maggie Mae. You know, he's just letting it flow. Uh, when he had the melody down, he began to piece together the lyrics around the theme of enjoying an afternoon delight. Gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight, gonna grab some afternoon delight. Gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight, gonna grab some afternoon delight. Taffy pointed out that Bill always seemed to have his guitar with him. You know, he had a thousand things running through his head at all times. He used his guitar the way some might use a pen and paper to write down ideas that popped into their head so they wouldn't forget them. So while Bill doodled around on the construction of Afternoon Delight in their apartment, Taffy thought that what she heard sounded really good. Lines and metaphors, they just started coming to Bill in rapid fire, not knowing exactly where they were coming from. For example, he couldn't recall what triggered the lyric skyrockets in flight. Uh, it could have been subconsciously from a comic book for all he knew. Bill's songwriting process, it was never linear. He just grabbed onto random words and phrases and tried to put them together like a puzzle, you know, like a Rubik's Cube. Rubbing sticks and stones together make the sparks ignite and the thought of loving you is getting so excited. At first, Bill wasn't satisfied with the early renditions of Afternoon Delight. He, did, he felt the song uh, that it demanded more than just a duet. It needed additional voices to fully realize its potential. Inspired by the harmonious sounds of groups like you know, Mamas and the Papas, Bill envisioned rich harmonies that would enhance the song's sing-along appeal. So whenever somebody would hear it on the radio, they'd want to sing along. Monday, Monday, so good to me. Bill remembered John Carroll, a 19-year-old freshman from the University of Miami that he thought had an incredible voice. And then he thought it would be great to include Margo Chapman because she sang like an angel. Bill designed uh, an exact blueprint for a new quartet, sketching a diagram on the lid of a grand piano. In his drawing, stick figure people surrounded the piano with John Carroll positioned to the keys. Margot Chapman standing in front and Taffy standing beside him as he played the guitar. It was the diagram for the Starland Vocal Band. John was brought on board for Afternoon Delight through his friend Mike Cotter, who had previously provided backup vocal for Billy and Taffy when they were in high school together. Uh, when John returned to DC for a wedding, the four of them gathered for an informal vocal session so Bill you know, could gauge how the song sounded with four voices. So the assembly of Danoff, Nivert, Chapman, and Carol as Starland Vocal Band, they were signed by John Denver's RCA imprint label, Windsong. This happened in 1975. And then the group traveled to New York City to record their debut album. In fact, John Denver did whatever he could to promote this group. You know, he took him on tour and he insisted that they appear with him on all of his TV appearances. So when the recording session started, Afternoon Delight, it, it wasn't working. To Bill, it sounded you know, flat and predictable. The band got the first test pressing of Afternoon Delight and they played it for some friends at Bill and Taffy's place. Jack Boyle, who ran the cellar door in the place that Bill and Taffy frequently performed at, he was pretty direct about the song. He said it did not sound like the vocal group they were trying to be. He thought it sounded like a guitar group. So after Jack's critique, the four members of the Starland vocal band knew that they had to recut the track. What Afternoon Delight really needed was a restoration by two music legends, producer Milt Olkin and engineer Phil Ramone. A similar to the abstract vibe of the Bill and Taffy records, Afternoon Delight had a complexity to it that Milt and Phil thought was really unnecessary. In Milt's opinion, the four members were very, very good singers, but the song was really challenging. Milt stated that the song was more complex and musically difficult than most folk arrangements. It was the closest thing to Bach that he had ever been involved with, is what he thought. Their plan was to put the wonderful aspects of the song to the forefront and make it just more cohesive. Session musician Russell George, who performed on the recording, recalled that the Starland vocal band, they were folkies, trying to come up with a groove that just would develop in a folk song. Russell, who would work with many R&B acts like James Brown and LaBelle, he asked Bill if he could kick things off for the reimagining of Afternoon Delight by setting up the entire groove. He really had a good feel for what they were going for. Everybody, 
Now, as we get into more of this story, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I always wear. Right now, you can choose from a variety of different frames to fit your needs. Uh, there's readers, migraine relief glasses, transition lenses, blue blocks, whatever you want. And you can shop by frame size and color, and you can design your own pair. Plus, get up to 80% off regular retail prices. Just click on our info button right up here to get the special POR price or the link below. So the band were incredibly fortunate to have Phil Ramone in the studio to engineer the music for Afternoon Delight. Now, Phil Ramone, he already had a number of prolific albums to his credit, such as There Goes Ryman Simon with Paul Simon. And of course, not long after his work with Starland Vocal Band, Phil produced some big time classics, namely The Stranger, Glass Houses, and The Nylon Curtain for starters. Those all for Billy Joel, along with Still Crazy After All These Years for uh, Paul Simon. Phil Ramone, who sadly passed away in 2013, was a master of the three elements that make it song. Melody, lyric, and groove, all of which worked perfectly on the final recording of Afternoon Delight. Phil had some really invaluable ideas to shape up Afternoon Delight into his single. Perhaps his biggest contribution was his idea to incorporate a sound effect that would accentuate the skyrockets in flight chorus. I mean, the production crew experimented with uh, quite a few instruments that they hoped would create a skyrocket effect, including enlisting a synthesizer expert named Suzanne Chiani, but nothing was working. So Phil asked session player Danny Pendleton to see what he could simulate on a pedal steel guitar. Danny made a slightly distorted sound on the pedal that was really close and then Phil told him to stretch out the effect, you know, drag it out a bit, and voila. The iconic Skyrockets in Flight sound effect for Afternoon Delight was born. Skyrockets in Flight, Afternoon Delight. Phil Ramone called the improvised sound effect a nice touch of musicality. He went on to say that the big glissando produced by the pedal still that comes in before the band sings Afternoon Delight in the chorus is what song arrangers call the hook. It was kind of the, uh, the id of the single in Phil's expert assessment. Skyrockets in flight, Afternoon Delight. Afternoon Delight presents an unusual blend of styles and moods if you really think about it. With the inclusion of the steel guitar, it exudes a, a distinctly American vibe. David Matthews, who had worked with Nina Simone and James Brown, created the string arrangement on Afternoon Delight, and the vocal arrangement, which was crafted by John Carroll, adds elements of counter motion, reminiscent of J.S. Bach, like I said before, lending the song a certain sophistication and artistic polish that contributed to the song's unique brand of ear candy. <laughs> Afternoon Delight, it was released in April of 1976 and has steadily moved up the Billboard Hot 100 to the number one position nine weeks after its debut. Contrary to the disco explosion in 76, Afternoon Delight really stood out from the other hot airplay tracks. I mean, AM radio was playing the likes of Donna Summer, Casey and the Sunshine Band, The Andrew True Connection. And the Silver Convention. Fly, copy, fly. In the midst of all this came Afternoon Delight. It was joyful and bright with a, a folksy sweetness to it. It was much different than anything else on the airwaves at that point. The wildly popular sing-along appeal of a song with you know, sexual overtones performed by a clean-cut image quartet created quite a, a dichotomy. Since John Carroll and Margot Chapman eventually married, I mean, you had two married couples singing this innocent harmonic pop song about grabbing some afternoon delight and you know working up an appetite. <laughs> However, according to Bill Danoff, it was never his intention to make afternoon delight an overtly sexual song. He only wanted the song to hint at something sexual. Of course, we know 
You can't stop people from, you know, letting their imagination run wild or maybe snicker a bit when they hear double entendres like the ones we hear on Afternoon Delight. Now, the song was initially featured as the theme for Simon Towns' Wonder World. Uh, it was a children's program from Australia that debuted in 1976. Simon Towns in the show's affable host is known for his gentle demeanor and uh, polite personality, making him one of the most endearing TV personalities you're likely to ever come across. Hello and welcome to Wonderworld. Once he learned the meaning behind the song, though, he immediately created a custom theme song to replace Afternoon Delight. I guess he didn't get it uh, when he chose it. Afternoon Delight And then Bill Danoff told a really funny story about uh, when the song started to get massive airplay on the radio and he took his car to the repair shop. So uh, as he was checking out, the mechanic stopped him and said, you know, I heard your new song on the radio. It's about a nooner, right? And actually Bill had never heard that expression before. He insists that he was only thinking of a song about a guy who doesn't want to wait until the nighttime to be with his girlfriend. Then when it's right, it's right, why wait until when Starland Vocal Band played a gig at the very religious institution of Oral Roberts University, they were escorted around campus by two students who informed them that their appearance at the university had caused uh, some controversy. The school facility actually held a meeting to discuss whether the band should be allowed to sing Afternoon Delight during their concert there. Uh, the facility took a vote and apparently the majority was in favor of letting them sing the hit. Afternoon Delight. Anyway, the remarkable triumph of Afternoon Delight propelled Starland Vocal Band to five Grammy nominations and two wins, along with an unsuccessful CBS variety show called The Starland Vocal Band Show. If uh, someone on the show were to take a pie like this and hit another person on the show in the face with it. The Starland Vocal Band Show, that ran for six weeks in the summer of 1977. If you turned, you would have missed it. The program introduced an emerging personality named David Letterman, who was a regular on the series, actually. I bet if you asked Dave to name the most embarrassing points of his career, his appearance on the Starland Vocal Band show might be a highlight of that particular uh, feeling. Close. You're nothing. <laughs> Starland Vocal Band was, as the lyric suggests, a skyrocketing flight that shot up to the highest point of the pop music stratosphere and then fell back down to earth just as quickly, really, as the group's ascension. Uh, the band released four more albums after their debut, but nothing came remotely close to the prosperity of Afternoon Delight. They never had another top 40 hit. The Starland Vocal Band called it quits in 1981. John Carroll stated that he knew the end was near. He wasn't sure if it was the group or Bill and Taffy that should break up, actually. But it was obvious that something drastic was going to happen. Danoff brought the group together before a rehearsal and made the official announcement there. Now, not long after the band broke up, Bill and Taffy divorced. John and Margot split up for good in 1990 after that. These days, Taffy is writing nonfiction novels. John performs as Mary Chapin Carpenter and records as a solo artist. He's also been voted as a musician of the year multiple times by the Washington Area Music Association. Margot continues to write music and occasionally collaborates with Taffy still. She and Taffy also attempted to have a solo career. <laughs> Bill Danoff has stayed busy writing for other artists, along with teaching and performing. He performed at the 25th reunion of the Georgetown class in 1968, appearing with his college friend and fellow Georgetown alumni, former President Bill Clinton. In 1987, Bill landed a bit part as the police officer charging Danny DeVito's character with assault in the movie Ten Men. And he opened a restaurant in Northwest Washington, D.C. called the Starland Cafe that eventually closed. His son, Owen Danoff, was a contestant on The Voice in uh, 2016. Oh, and she never gives up. In 2010, Billboard magazine named Afternoon Delight the 20th sexiest song of all time. It's also been included on many of the worst songs ever recorded surveys since its release in 1976, let's be honest. But regardless of how you personally regard this tune, Afternoon Delight has a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's category of one-hit wonders. 
and it has established a permanence in pop culture. Whenever the song is featured in a movie or a TV show, it's one of the most memorable scenes in the show. One of the first to use the song was the movie PCU. If you've seen the movie Good Will Hunting, you certainly remember that scene you know, where Matt Damon fakes being hypnotized and starts singing Afternoon Delight, one of the best parts of the movie. Hey, Afternoon Delight, sky rockets in flight. Da, da. Bill Danoff's favorite placement, however, is in the cinema satire of Starsky and Hutch with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. But the all-time classic is when the Ron Burgundy and Channel 4 news team sing Afternoon Delight and Anchorman. Uh, that scene generated a whole new generation of fans for this song. Uh, director Adam McKay even brought in a vocal coach uh, so that Will Ferrell, Paul Rudd, David Koechner, and uh, Steve Carell you know, would nail the song's famous four-part harmony. Sky rockets in flight. Woo! Afternoon delight. Whoop. You guys have it, I think. Huh. I really admire that Bill Danoff is totally cool with the satire. He actually once stated that if he wasn't a songwriter, he would have been a comedy writer. You know, looking back, I remember catching my dad singing the song uh, more than a few times. As many of you know, my dad was a, a Zeppelin and Beatles guy, but even he got pulled into this addicting earworm. I mean, I suppose Afternoon Delight is one of those hit songs that you either love to love or love to hate. Me, myself, I lean towards the position of Ron Burgundy. I'm gonna leave him with the last word. Now, if you don't think this song is the greatest song ever, I will fight you. That's no lie. Leave us a comment about this sing-along classic one-hit wonder from 1976. What are your memories of it? What do you think about the song? Did you know it was a one-hit wonder? Let's have a great discussion below about a truly unique song. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.